All right, folks, uh, let's start. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Yuzo. Uh, this is ECE 360. Uh, today is our 21st lecture. And uh, obviously, uh, more than two-thirds of the semester has, has, has been gone. So uh, we are uh, expecting the midterm three coming next week. Uh, today uh, should be the very last lecture for uh, the design via through Lucas. And uh, if something left a little bit, we will uh, finalize them by the next week lecture. Okay. And there's one uh, PD controller design uh, problem uh, in the midterm three. So you want to be very careful for this upcoming example two. Okay. Can you guys hear me well? All right, thank you. Okay, yeah. let's move on. Thanks. Thanks. All right, let's move on. So first of all, we learned a little bit about PD controller. We know it is introducing an extra gain, and this time KP. And to differentiate this KP with the PI controller introduced KP, we're going to use a prime here, okay? KP prime out of PD. Okay. Because both PD and PI have P KP, right? And PD also introducing a new zero. Yeah. Zero value is equals negative KP over KD. Assuming the KP, assuming the PD controller in this format, you know, which is KP prime here, times one plus KD over KP times S. Because obviously you can also uh, reorganize or rewrite this equation to be like a unity one as the coefficient of S, right? And you can do that like this. Completely equivalent. And so that way you're going to have uh, KD. And then we have KP prime plus S. Right? Of course, you can write it in this way. However, we keep this format. Okay, We keep this format through this entire course. Including the exam, homework, the final project, and the upcoming examples as well. Okay, we keep this format. Okay, we are not using this one, okay. even though they are equivalent. Therefore, the coefficient of S here is not unity. Okay. So, PD can do what? You need to be very clear. The PD can change the rule locus dramatically by introducing this zero here. Okay. And also, it can change the, uh, the gain, of course. Okay. Because it can change the rule locus a lot, so you can somehow place the new rule locus across the desired dominant poles. Therefore, you can improve the transient significantly. This is the idea, this idea. So PD is taking care of improving the transient. PI, well, you can review. The PI can do what? PI is taking care of what? Anyone remember? Well, as P, what P can do? Anyone remember anything? PI can do what? Anyone? Remember it? And keep the origin point without fluctuation. Let's say that again. Uh, I had that it's stable. Like it can keep the origin point without fluctuation and take. A range in point means what? The poles. Uh, no, I don't think it's accurate. Okay, but Kevin's answer is close. First, the PI can do, introduce a new KP gain, right? That gain can change the stability. That's right. And the I, this guy, which is introducing what? This, this one, right? Integral. This is a zero pole. 
this guy can do what? Completely eliminate the steady state error for stab input. Okay. So this is the PI can do. And another thing, never forget that PI can do is if you are making the zero close to a ranging point, PI won't change the original and compensated system rule occurs a lot. Okay, it won't change it a lot. So you can keep basically keep the rule locus. Okay. So if you are making the zero of the PI controller, okay, it's, it's not zero of anything else. If you're making the zero of the PI close to a region point, PI controller won't change the rule locus a lot. Eliminating the stat input. Uh, steady state error and change the stability. This is the P I can do. And what P can do? P itself. Remember, we learned now is three, right? Number bulletin three. Two is P I, one is P. We began with P. So, what P can do? First, regarding the rule of cost, what P can do about it? I keep it, right? Keep it. So you now change rule locus. Okay, the rule locus looks exactly the same. Looks exactly the same. And what P can do then? It's not doing anything to the rule locus, but it changed stability. Yep. Yeah. It changed the stability. By what? By pushing the new closed loop pose. Moving, right? Pushing and moving along the rule locus. Right? You're going to have different locations if you close the pole. Now, this must be very clear, okay? What P, PI, and PD respectively can do to the rule locus and therefore the system performance should be very careful. Well, why is that? Well, midterm three has what? Multiple choice, right? All right, move on. For example two, example two, uh, as I said at the beginning today, uh, this is uh, something uh, very close to one of the problems in midterm, two, two, midterm three, okay? So this is how to design, how to design a PD controller, even uncompensated system. Like this, another block diagram. Design a PD controller. To make such requirement happen, first it is gonna yield the same overshoot, but shrinking your settling time to one third. Now, this is the uh, everything specified. This is a specific system it's modeled by some testing. And then after modeling, you receive this gain, you receive this zero pole, receive negative four, negative six as the forward transfer function pole. So you're seeing the open loop transfer function of this original system as what? Zero pole, right? So you're expecting to see uh, there's no step input status error by itself. 
even without applying PI controller, they can achieve that, right? So let's see how to do this problem. Let's see how to do this problem step by step, okay? Because this is design, it's not completely exactly same as the exam problem, because in the exam, you are now allowed to use the MATLAB. So the exam problem is not a design problem. It's just a part of the design problem. So here, this example two, example two is a complete design problem. Okay, so be careful with the difference. Let's see how to use the MATLAB to do this design. Okay, to, to do this design. So first is is the requirement. The requirement is saying you want to have the same overshoot, same overshoot as the uncompensated system. And the second is the requirement for the settling time, right? So obviously, these two requirements are about the new improved compensated system compared to the uncompensated given system, right? So first of all, what do you need to do? Uncompensated system. Overshoot and settling time respectively equals to what does it make sense you need to know the uncompensated says the overshoot and the settling time so that you are able to know what are the required compensated system overshoot and settling time okay. and how to know these things then how to know these things here remember this guy Directly from rule locus in MATLAB, okay, of course, in MATLAB. And this guy, what can we know? You need to remember this. Okay. This, uh, this is the uh, second order system, uh, settling time formula. In terms of the real part magnitude of the dominant pole, real part magnitude of dominant poles. So let's take a look at the uh, uncompensated system from where we can find post overshoot and the dominant real part magnitude. Dominant post real part magnitude. Okay. So to find that, we need to first of all clarify what is the open loop seated system open loop transfer function is what? It's just as simple as this, right? Of course, here is the constant gain. And when we plot the root locus, we only input this as the open loop transfer function. Remember, this is the way how we introduce the varying k. This is the transfer function we need to plot the uncompensated system through locus. Now is the time for MATLAB to kick in. Here we go. Here, once again, this example to module seven, the code will be posted into Canvas, yeah, module seven. So let's run section by section. Okay, so clear all, close all, and clear the screen of the command window. First, here, input the zeros of the uncompensated system. Okay. Zeros. There's no zeros, no finite zeros. Okay. There's no finite zeros. See here, no finite zeros. Three poles are respectively 0, 94, and 96. These are three poles. And then use zero pole gain function to build up this transfer function, right? Uh, so I call the original uncompensated system as G1. 
zero pull in the game. Uh, as I said, we are using one as the game. Okay. We'll generate a blank figure one and then plot this rule locus of the uncompensated system. So if you run this section, here we go. This is the resulted uncompensated system. Rule locus. Rule locus. So how to find the overshoot for the current system? Or say how to locate the, the point, how to locate the dominant pole point for this given specific uncompensated system. And even remember what we did in the PI example one. Anyone remember that? Or if, if we look for a point along the curve that has mm -hmm. responding uh, 43.4. As the gate. Very yeah. good. Here we go. Okay. So we can try to check it, but as the same problem we had last in last time in example one, very hard to locate 43.4. Okay, very, very hard. So we have to uh, zoom in. Okay, remember this. We have to zoom in. We know it roughly is is about this region. So we just zoom in this region and then we start to check along it, 43, 43. What is it now? What's the gain now? That's 44, so we're in Here we go. Perfect. 16% overshoot. Yep, which is not very easy to locate exactly the gain, okay. so. It's the the, the zooming, the bigger, the easier for you to locate the, uh, the exact number. So 43.4, the gain here, right? And then we need two information. One is overshoot. It's showing you the overshoot of the uncompensated system, 16%. Second thing you got to remember, you know, back to here, we also need this real part of the real part of the dominant pose and real part of dominant pose so that we can know the settling time okay this is how we know the settling time from the rulocus because in the rulocus here it is not giving you the settling time or or any time value right so you have to estimate that by based on the formula for over the real part so what is dominant pose now Anyone can can read it. What are dominant poles? Negative one point two plus two point oh seven i. That's right. Okay, that's right. Of course, by dominant poles, we are talking about one pair of conjugate poles. So a more accurate. Answer will be 91.2 plus minus 2.07 i or j. Okay. To MATLAB, I think j and i, it doesn't. So this is dominant pose. So what we need is what? Real part magnitude, right? Real part magnitude, therefore, is what? 1.2, right? Directly 1.2. So we can go back here to move on here. Once again, we got these two information dominant pose and overshoot. The further we can know the uncompensated system, uh, once again, uncompensated system, okay? We are not, not talking about uncompensated system. Or uh, settling time is what? 4 over 1.2, right? 4 over 1.2. Basically, 10 third, a second. Or say 3.3333333 second. Right? And from here, what can we know? What can we know is two things. Desired compensated system. That's what? Overshoots is, is what? 
settling time is what? Anyone remember? Overshoot is what? Everyone's following? Any response? What are the uh, overshoot and the settling time for a desired compensated system? Well, we should just be able to take 16% and then multiply for the overshoot and then multiply TS by a third from the previous system because isn't that what our design criteria is? Exactly right. Does it make sense? Um, I, I guess I one third. And that's right. Alex does the right too. Okay, so these are the two results we can have for now. And never forget they are respectively equals to what? Four over the new real part of the new dominant pose, and this guy equals what? Exponential of negative real part divided by E memory part times pi. Right? Here, the real part, E memory part, they're having the prime to be differentiated from the uncompensated system. Because we are now talking about real part and memory part for the compensated system. Okay. So what are you seeing now? There's two equations, right? Two equations, two unknowns, real and the memory part. Right? Therefore, we are able to derive the desired or say the compensated system real part and the memory part of course magnitudes okay well, we in the equation they are in terms of magnitude and now we are looking for their magnitudes too so a little bit algebra here yeah two once again one two equations two unknowns we can find these two unknowns they turn out to be around here Therefore, the conclusion is the compensated system domain and pose are what? What a dominant pose then? Now we know the magnitude of the real part and memory part, and what are the dominant pose then? S, or S of one and two should equal negative 1.2 plus or minus the uh, 6.17. Uh, J, yeah. Say the real part once again. Yep, Alex is right. Negative one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm looking at the previous one. Got yeah, it. the, the 1.2 is the uncompensated system real part. Okay. So be careful. We just find the uh, real part for a compensated system. We use this guy. Okay. This is very important. Okay, this is very important. Negative here. Okay, it must be negative. And here, positive. And negative. Very good. Okay, very good. Very good. Very good. So this is the 
the desired dominant pose after applying the PD controller. Okay, after applying the PD controller, this is the desired dominant pose. Okay. According to which we start to find the PD controller. How to find a PD controller? First of all, you need to uh, be clear on this. So after applying PD controller, the system becomes this, right? I mean, the system becomes this. Okay, so that's PD. So here we have KP1 plus K over KP first prime times S, and then cascade with the original system. This is the uh, resulted system block diagram. Yeah, we can visualize it. So after applying the P P PD controller, the system becomes this. And the rule locus of which should go through the new desired dominant pose. Does this make sense? What does it mean by go through? It means the new points should be on it. Should be on a new rulers. Does this idea make sense? Any uh, questions for, for, for this part? The new rulocus, this new system here, rulocus should go through this point. This sounds like what? Sounds like uh, the example in module six, right? In where we have given a point, S point, judging if this point is on the even system rulocus, right? Remember that example? It's pretty much that that example, isn't it? Now we find this point, I'm trying to make it going through this system. Okay, same thing. So who remember what we did, how, how we how we judge the a given point on the rule locus or not? What we did, what principle we are following? Anyone remember? Anyone remember it? Back in uh, here, uh, Kevin said it's phaser check equals to positive 90, 180. Well, it's a very rough answer, but I, I, I think he he is talking about the thing right. Okay, he's talking about the right thing. We are applying what? So called phase property, remember? Applying the phase property. And this is what we did for that for that example. Well, which is also one of the uh, midterm three problem, okay, by the way. All right, we're going to follow the same idea. We're going to follow the same idea. Okay, following the same idea. So this is the point. This is obviously the point. And this is the system. We are trying to make this point on the rulocus of this system by applying the phase property. All right, rulocus, cool, but phase property. So first of all, the compensated system 
open loop transfer function is what? Well, this is the system. Uh, open loop transfer function is very easy. Just uh, what? 43.4 times kp prime, right? And then times one plus kd over kp prime s, right? This numerator d number is this. It's the compensated system of open loop transfer function. Now, just from out of here, right? Just out of here. So how to make these uh, these two points going through it? Phase property. Right? Its property property is saying what? The phase angle of this guy. Phase angle of this guy is equals to odd number times of one eighty degree. So Kevin's answer, like a positive ninety one eighty degree, are two out of these infinity number of solution okay, to all of those infinity. Therefore, the face angle of this guy is what? First of all, the face angle of the gain, right? Face angle of the gain plus face angle of is zero. Not KD zero, but this uh, fraction minus the angle of s and minus angle of s plus four minus angle of plus six, right? We just assume it is equals to 180 degree. We just, we just need to assume one particular value. And then what's next? Anyone, anyone figure it out? What's the next step when it, we want to do? Well, we should do the magnitude property, right? No, no, no. We, we are still in the middle of the phase property. There we go. Now, substitute the S value into the S. Very good. Never forget this is the S value. Okay, this given point is nothing but S value. So S equals to obviously we just need one, right? We just need one. So let's just a substitute many 3.6 plus 61.17J. We just need to substitute one. After substitute one, uh, tell me this is one equation. How many unknowns? Can you tell that? In this phase property equation, how many unknowns? Two. Very good. Alex is right again. So, why are those two? I, I, by the way. KP, of course, KP prime and KD. Good. No is right. Realize this is what? After, of course, again, after some substituting the S value, okay, what do you have? KP prime and KD as unknown. But one equation. We are not going to be able to find a KD equals to what and KP prime equals to what. Okay, we are not be able to. However, it doesn't matter, right? Why is that? We just need to find this guy, the ratio between two. That's it. Okay, be very careful on on, the, on this thing. You're being clear. Okay, we are not looking for KD and KB prime. We are looking for the ratio between them. All right, so move on. Uh, what's the angle of this guy? What's the angle of this guy? Zero, good. Yeah, two is right. Very good. Kevin is right too. And then what is next is here is, what's the angle of this guy, right? Just This is just this guy. And what we have here is basically one plus K 
KD over KP prime times on this guy, right? Times on this guy. What, what, what do we have? That is six, three point six times KD over KP prime plus six point seventeen KD over KP prime. J, right? Does this make sense? This, this, this term. Okay, this, this term. Minors one angle here, one angle here, and one angle here. These three angles are fairly easy, right? These three very easy. You just substitute the S value, and then you got the angle. And uh, if you do everything correct, you should have angle of and then equals to 180 degree. And here, of course, uh, we keep moving, keep moving. Then what's the angle of this guy? Any idea how to, how to deal with this? Uh, please, by the way, please be aware that now what we are doing now, this part of the solution, or say this page, is a problem of exam three. And this portion of the design is the problem of the exam three. Well, not exactly the same, but you know, I mean, uh, we'll have different value, different system. But what we are doing, this procedure is the uh, answer for one of the problems in upcoming midterm. Okay. All right, anyways, uh, how to deal with this angle? First of all, we want to organize it into a nice real part and the imaginary part, right? How about the real part is one minus 3.6 AD over KP prime. The memory part is just a 6.17 KD over KP prime. Okay, right. Then minus the total angle here. And equals to 180 degree. So what's the angle of, of this complex number? Once again, this is a real part. This is the memory part. What's the angle of this guy? Then? Uh, two answer is a little bit off, but first of all, we need to express this. Okay, we need to express this. Okay, this uh, this is a complex number, right? Complex numbers angle is equals to what? How about inverse tangent? Inverse tangent what? A ratio, right? Numerator is whom? is home. Email report. I did not matter what. Real part. Here we go. Jeff is right. How about that? This is a, this is the expression for the angle of this term, right? And then what do we need to do? We just uh, these three angles move to the other side of the equal and combine it with 180, and you got one value. Uh, what I got is this degree, 455.3. Couldn't we just subtract 360 from that to because it's the same thing, right? 
Exactly. So you subtract it or not, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, as as John said, obviously this is same same degree. Does it make sense? They are the same degree. You subtract class or somehow with 360 degree. It doesn't matter. Your calculator doesn't mind that either. So from here, once again, always be clear, we are considering this ratio as the only unknown. So you are seeing, once again, one, no, one, one equation and one unknown, right? You can find a ratio. What you need to do is just the math here, just the math here. And from here, you can tell this. Obviously, it equals tangent of this angle. Okay. And by your calculator, it should give you value. Now, from here, it's very easy. You can find KD over T prime. It just equals to 0.33. Oh, my God. I can hear you, Elliot. Oh, sorry. My connection died out there for a second. <laughs> I, th I thought you were talking about my answer or procedure. <laughs> it should have no, been. no. I was getting mad at the computer. <laughs> Hopefully it's not that bad. Okay. I know. I know. Yeah, you, should like, you guys should be like, oh, well. Because the, once again, you guys need to do this in the exam, okay? Seriously, okay? you really need to do this in the exam. So you need to understand this. Okay? Oh, shh, scary. <laughs> All right, anyways, any questions regarding this procedure? It's be because we have um, basically done the uh, majority part of the PD controller, right? And uh, always keep in mind our PD controller Always keep in mind, okay, here, I'm writing the PD controller is, looks like what? KP prime times one plus KD over KP prime S. Okay, keep this in your mind because we already got this part. You see that? We already got this part. The only thing we don't know yet for the PD is the game, introduce the new game. Okay. Once again, any questions? Can you do the same thing in the exam? All right, if this time we move on. As a design problem, we need to move on. We need to move on. Okay? Design problem, we need to move on. So this this result is telling us what? It's telling us this. So the compensated system. Of course, it means with the PD controller. Okay, with PD is what? Is we're say the open loop transfer function is what? Is this right? One plus point three three s, and then four plus six. Right? And here we have forty three point four times kp prime in front of it as a gain here. Does it make make sense so far? This is the compensated system open loop transfer function. Okay. Of course, we with unity v back. And the system looks like this, right? Once again, here is, sorry, KP prime one plus 0.33 S. And here connect to 
33.4 s s plus 4 s plus 6 this is the system this is the system and therefore the open loop transfer function is here once again we the only i know we we, we, we don't solve yet is the KP prime. Okay. So how to find it? Anyone has any idea how to find this 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 uh, KP prime? Any idea? Well, now should we like use MATLAB again then to find a point on the root locus and then we can find K and which then can be used to find KP prime, right? Excellent. Is everyone following? Basically, he got every single point I should, I want to say. Okay. First, as John said, we are going to go back to MATLAB. Going back to MATLAB. Obviously, we add this section of the code and the introducing the PD central function. And when we do this, uh, be careful. We are using we are using what? We're using this transfer function as the transfer function to plot the rule locus. We need new rule locus. We need new compensated system rule locus. Without introducing, without giving any original gain, okay, we are without involving this part, without involving this part. So we are thinking like this, right? We're introducing k here to vary, therefore forming the rule locus. Okay. So now this one, this one is that. We're talking about here. Okay. Therefore, you're introducing the PD controller like this. And you are having the compensated system. This is the open loop transfer function. It just equals to the new PD controller times because they are cascaded, con uh, connected, right? That's why the con uh, the open loop transfer function just equals to the PD times the uncompensated system G1. This is the compensated system G2. To make make some sense, and here be very careful. Okay, the, when you define a PD controller, be very careful. The coefficient of s goes first, which is 0.33, followed by constant terms, which is one. Therefore, this is a numerator, and the denominator is nothing but but one constant. That's why this transfer function numerator and denominator. Be very careful how you write this PD function and now we run this section and to receive the uh, compensated system rule locus what we should say first of all just by the first glance we, we can tell what the rule locus is dramatically changed right which makes a perfect sense we we, we at beginning we we know this, right? We, we, we knew this from the beginning. PD can change the rule locus dramatically. That's why we can use it for improving the uh, transit. So now, as John said, we are looking for what? We are looking for the point along the rule locus. How do we find locate that point? What criterion we are using? Shouldn't it be the designed, uh, or sorry, the calculated value of negative 3.6 plus or minus the 6.17j? Uh, very good. Very good. Remember the desired dominant poles, negative 3.6 plus minus 6.17j? Remember to use it. Okay, if you're locating that point, but guess what? We probably cannot exactly locate that point because maybe that point is not exactly on the rule locus, 
However, we are looking for somewhere close to it, close enough to it. All right, so let's roughly go 93.6, right? 93.6. If we are locating exactly 93.6, what we got in terms of the memory part is what? It's not 6.17, isn't it? It's 6.04. So you can increase a little bit trying to make it close to 17. How about this? Is this close enough? Is it fair to you? Negative 3.6 plus minus what? 6.22. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all, right? Well, our gain now is uh, 145, but that's just K, not KP prime, right? That's correct. Now, from here, what you're seeing is actually two more information. First one is the gain. The new gain is 145. Be very careful. As John said, this is not KP prime. This is the total gain K, 145. Second one is what is the overshoot, can you see? 16.3, is it good or bad? Why? Well, that's desired because we were trying to get 16% overshoot from the start. Exactly, okay, exactly. Okay, I hope everyone is following this. Overshoot here is telling you 16.3 is, is matching what we desire, remember? Okay, so this point are good, this point is good. Okay, this point is good. So back in the notes here, we should write from the compensated system rule locus. We find dominant poles as 93.6 plus minus 6.22J and also overshoots of 16.3%. And especially the gain, the most, most important thing is the gain is 145. Once again, this is not KP prime, but equals to what? Anyone knows this equals what? 145. That's the 43.4 KP prime. Very good. This equals to this guy. Therefore, we got KP prime eventually. Right. And of course, this equals to uh, 3.341, 1, if you like it. Guess what? Done. Done, right? Done. Of course, here you want to do uh, a couple of more things, a couple of more things. First one is identify the PD controller. PD controller transfer function is what? KP prime one plus KD over KP prime S. And here, KP prime 3.341 times one plus 0.33s. That makes sense. This is a design a PD controller. This is a design a PD controller. Is the answer? Is the answer right? Is the answer? Second thing, what do you want to do? Go back to MATLAB to do what? Step response. To justify. that the desired overshoot and setting time. Remember, these are, these are the only two requirements for the design. These are the only two requirements for the design.
uh, through several pages, and this is the, the problem. The problem. Only two requirements. Let's see. Uh, for in terms of the uh, value, what we uh, what are we expecting to see? Overshoot want to be sixteen percent. Settling time, what is it? Anyone remember what is settling time? We want. Very good. Or one point one 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 second. Right. One point one 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 second. So keep this in mind, and we go to MATLAB once again. We're at the very last section here. So K1 is the original uncompensated system gain. K2, 145, is the compensated system gain. So we involve them into the closed-loop trend function. Okay, but be very careful this time. We are looking for the step response. Therefore, we are looking for the closed loop transfer function. Be very careful to do the step response. Okay. okay. So, step response of uncompensated and compensated system. If you run this session, then here are the step response. By legend, you can tell which is which. Compared to the blue, what do you see? Let's see the peak response. Not too bad. There, there's a little bit off, but not too bad. It's in settling time here and here. Can tell we are achieving the requirement? One is keeping about same over overshoot. Second, shrink the settling time to one third. We are achieving those. Does that make sense? Any comments, any questions regarding that? And remember to come this uh, step response in the final project, right? And of course here, uh, the overshoot here is not exactly 16, 16%. The settling time is not exactly 3.3 uh, to 3 either. Can anyone tell why there is some off? Anyone knows why, what's the reason for the value is being off. Running? Uh, no, we are not running that bad. Well, when we selected our values, they weren't exactly this correct precision, right? Uh, that that's a good point. However, I'm talking about the blue, which is uncompensated system. We are not selecting any any anything yet, right? Uh, Sawyer said it because we're adding some damping. No, once again, we are talking about blue, the, the uncompensated system. It's not the, well, after designing the PD, yes, there's some off here in overshoot and the setting time that's completely understand, understandable. It's very normal. And the, the blue system is also off from what the, uh, from our theoretical calculation. Why is that? Well, I don't know. How do we know for sure that uh, maybe this is a long shot, but how do we know that the settling time percentage is not the same thing that we consider? Like, is it 98% or is that what that is? Yeah, it is. It is. Okay. The so definition, that's... yeah, we are following exactly the same definition. There's no, no doubt for that. Is it when you clicked on the root locus graph, if you were off just a little bit, our percentages would be different? Well, that's true, but once again, we're talking about we're talking about the compensated system. The in, when we locate when we locate the uh, locus, then then we locate forty three point four exactly. Remember, 
compensated system once again. We're not exactly reaching the point 93.6 plus minus 16, uh, 6.17, right? It didn't exactly uh, matching that point, which means there's going to be some off in, in transit. That, that's super normal. However, we are talking about uncompensated system. Not exactly the same as our th theoretical calculation result in terms of the overshoot and settling time. Why is that? Well, I'm seeing at the start that our overshoot is not what we specified. What do you mean by that? It's going to bend 16%. So even the uncompensated system is not at 16%. But why? Um, I mean, here, right? I mean, it is 60. Exactly 43.4 and maybe 16 here. But I mean, I have wrote down negative 1.2 plus or minus 2i, not 2.07i. Why? Should we use 2.07i? Did you use that in the MATLAB calculation? In the MATLAB calculation? Yeah. MATLAB calculation. MATLAB is not doing any calculation for us. Oh, it would be in our hand calculations. Yeah, yeah. yeah our hand calculation part uh, using uh, here. You see? Okay. Uh, Alex saying the feedback. Oh, the feedback is not bothering anything. Noah saying yes, X is not small enough to do. <laughs> no, no. Okay, well. Unfortunately, uh, he agrees with more. Well, the, the because 40.3, 40 40.32, 40 uh, that, that's that, that won't affect the overshoot by that much because here overshoot 15.1 and and 16, it's it's the off significantly 3.33 and the 3.47. That's that's that cannot be explained simply by running. Oh, here, I finally, I see the correct answer from Sawyer. I'm not surprised uh, he should know the answer because he was the first student who brought up this issue in the first place. Back in module four or three, can't remember. Folks, never forget what we are dealing with. It's not second order system, okay? It's not a second order system at all. However, we are applying the second order, like what? Formula, we are applying the Bauman pole concept to approximate a higher order system. Okay, that's the reason. Very good. Very, very good. Now, due to the time limit, we stop this uh, uh, discussion here. And... Uh, for the exam three ish, everything should be enough. All the knowledge has been instructed. However, we have a project assigned today, uh, one hour ago, actually. And this is our uh, project assigned today and due by December 7th, 1 p.m. Once again, remember, this is the uh, computer system. 1 p.m. is 1 p.m. You are late by one minute, you won't be able to submit anymore. Okay. Be very careful. So December uh, 7th is due date. Due date. And let's take a look at the uh, instruction of the uh, our project together. Take a look at the instruction uh, here together. A given Basically, you can read the instruction yourself. And basically, the given system is actually uh, modeled here, a steering system like this. Once again, it's, it's not a uh, second order system exactly. It's a higher order system, but we are applying the dominant pole idea to, to solve it. Yeah. 
But here are the Brahmins. Okay, be very careful here. Be very careful here. These are Brahmins. First, it must be stable. Okay, so very easy to, to achieve. Second, steady state error must be exactly zero. It's the following the, the priority of the design, remember? Stability goes first. Second, consider the uh, steady state error. The last state is transient. Okay. And the requirement on transient is the peak time. Peak time, not sta session time. This time. Peak time is need to be reduced to about half. And overshoot is about the same. It's not exactly the same as our example two. And the last thing is something new. The last thing is something new. Be careful. Um, maybe you have an example three to go through a PID controller design. Uh, example three will be uh, a PID controller design. Okay. And uh, probably we have to wait until next Monday to talk about it. But in that design, we, generally speaking, uh, design the PD first, followed by PI. And when we design the PI, remember back in example one, we, we won't make the zero PI very big. We make it very close to the origin point. Okay, we're going to do that. However, after that, you get everything transient meeting the requirement. And... Oh yeah, the, the exam on Monday. So, I mean, next lecture will be the next Wednesday. Correct. Okay. Correct. That's what I mean. Next Wednesday lecture. And uh, after taking care of the transient, now you will be a step response. You will find that the settling time is too big. It's not good. So, how to improve the settling time? You're decreasing the PI zero. We will see how to do this in the uh, example three next Wednesday. Okay. And this is the only thing I remind you. Okay. You probably want to do a little bit notes about it. Okay. Remember to do so. Remember to do so. Okay. Decreasing PI zero to improve the PS. Because the requirements on the, the transient are uh, on TP and OS, right? Over true. There's no solid requirement on PS. However, at last, you find the TS is, is not good. So do a little bit to improve it. That will be fine. Okay, but you need to remember to do so. You see example three again. Okay. Roughly repeating the uh, procedure we will learn on Wednesday. It shouldn't be very difficult after this example two, actually. After example two, you basically know how to design a PD. Back in example one, you know how to do the design of PI. So example three is combining them two together. Okay. And here are the uh, requirements. That's a procedure. I'm also showing you the uh, how I can grade you. Okay, this is pretty much the rubric. It's pretty much the rubric. Well, of course, this is something for module uh, eight. Frequency response. Okay, you need to do a body plot and find the PM and B BW. Find the PM and the BW from your uh, MATLAB frequency response. Okay, we will learn how to do this in module eight. And uh, some format requirement. And here, repeating the new time, pretty much. This is the uh, final project. You can even start off after, right after today's lecture. Okay. Your uh, knowledge-wise should be uh, enough. Of course, example three is going to eventually combine example one the two together, talking about how to okay, design PID, which includes both PD and PI. Okay. Any questions regarding the term three?
and uh, and uh, and the projects. Any questions? I can explain. Anything? Uh, I have a question on problem four on the exam. So do you want us to use MATLAB to solve the problem? No, no, no. As I said today, you won't be able to use the MATLAB. No, you are not allowed to use. You shouldn't be able to either. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> if, if you are able to solve it by MATLAB, well, you're basically telling me you are cheating, right? <laughs> but anyways, anyways, problem four is part of the example two. Okay. Once again, part of example two. Let me specify that once again. Okay. It's, it's uh, this part. Example, example two here. Mm, okay, here, this page. So of course, obviously in the problem, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you this. I can tell you the desired point, desired pose, location, pretty much the S value. I'm asking you, your system, to go through the system, to go through this given point, and then to therefore you to go to design a KD over KP prime. Of course, in the exam, I, I might use the KP. Uh, but you know what I mean, right? Uh, if you have both K, uh, PI and PD, you need to differentiate them by P, KP and the KP prime. But if you only deal with one of them, you can feel free to use KP without prime. Is that problem clear now, everybody? Yes or no? All right. Good. Here, uh, cheat sheet allowed as euro? Yes, as euro. Any other concerns? Anything else I can help you with? I know I we are not completely finalized the module seven. However, to exam three should be sufficient. Okay, should be enough. You know the PI, you know the PD already. Only left thing example three is combining PI and PD. So we have to use MATLAB for the exam? Oh, come on. What I'm saying is you are not able to use MATLAB and you are not allowed to use MATLAB either. Is that, is that clear to everybody? All right, thanks. Any other things I can help with? Any other concerns? All right. So thank you for attending today's lecture and good luck with midterm three. And, uh, talk to you guys basically on Wednesday, if not on Monday. Okay. All right, bye now.